All right, what is up my brothers? So in this video I got a request from a female uh, viewer. Looks like she's um, been watching my podcast and my book. And she wants to know, do men in relationships usually want to sleep with other women? So she goes on to say here, and it looks like a post that she shared somewhere else. I'll just read it word, word for word. Uh, As a man who here wants to sleep with women other than their own partner, even when they are in love and in a committed relationship, and why? She's 24. I hate it when they use partner. Boyfriend, fiance. Come on, people. Let's get, let's get to the reality of things. Partners, <laughs> you're not running a law firm. It's not a partnership. Anyway, 24-year-old female and her fiance, 26-year-old male, says he still has urges to sleep with other women. Uh, we've been together for two years, are engaged. This has broken my heart as I don't think of other men like that when I'm in love. Oh well, let's get into that and hop on the highway and talk about that because this brings me back again, of course, to men and women are different. We are not the same. We are incredibly different. And what men and women want when it comes to the sexual marketplace are on two different playing fields, if we're being honest. Uh, men's sexual strategy, again, is they generally want unlimited access to unlimited women. It's always been that way. It's always going to be that way. The highest value men throughout history have pretty much always run harems of women or had mistresses or had multiple wives. Um, the poor, uh, far, far less successful men, if you will, when it came to dating and relationships, uh, were lucky to get one uh, wife, partner, whatever. Uh, and some of the very low tier guys didn't get any at all. Uh, that's just the reality of the world. So this woman's engaged. She's been watching my podcast, read my book, and she's upset now that she's found out that her fiance has announced that he still has uh, desires to be with other women. First of all, stupid announcement to make, dude. Uh, it's kind of a given, if we're being honest, right? If you're a guy and you're healthy, and you've got, you know, your hormone levels are all normalized and, you know, you've got good testosterone in your body and you, and you lift weights. Whenever you see an attractive woman, the first thought across your mind is, hmm, I like that. It's not, I wonder how many degrees she has on her wall. It's not, I wonder if she's good at chess. It's, I like the way she walks when she's walking away. You know, that's just what guys are. Um, women, on the other hand, when they're in a long-term relationship and they're in love sort of thing uh, this woman's engaged and she's had over heels for this guy it seems other dudes are invisible and that's okay that's the way it should be uh, other men should be invisible to you as a woman if you're a good woman that's not corrupted by society today telling women that they can sleep with as many men as they want without any consequences whatsoever uh, or have multiple partners like these nutter polyamorous type of relationships, which by the way is usually a very average looking five in a relationship with three or four very below average looking twos or threes. Um, women are not hardwired to be with multiple men simultaneously. They just don't have an interest in it. A woman's sexual strategy is open hypergamy, which is essentially her looking for the best provisioning guy that she can get and locking him down and having babies with him and uh, using his resources and uh, competency skills to raise those kids in a useful manner. That's the way it works. I am, it, it's beyond me, you know, with the amount of conversations that I've had, with podcasts that I've had and videos that I've had, why women still believe that men and women are the same. Same thing with dudes, right? Like a lot of plugged in beta males seem to think that uh, you know, men and women are the same, and you know, if I'm if I'm just uh, enthusiastic enough for the female first primary social order, I too will get women um, and treat them all equally with respect, sort of thing. And look, guys, it's just a reality of life. Okay, men want to scatter seed. Guys, there's a reason why fellas will generate millions of sperm on a daily basis, but women will only produce one egg per month. Okay, that is why we're here on this earth, right? We are not uh, monogamous creatures. Monogamy is an outlier in the animal kingdom with, the, with, with a very small handful of exceptions. But again, women want the best guy that they can get. Once they find him, wife me up, put a ring on the finger, you know, what are you waiting for? Is it uh, shit or get off the pot? Like whatever the story or their narrative ha happens to be, women do 
encourage, or let's say persuade men to abandon their sexual strategy and commit to them, which is in their best interest. Now that may not necessarily be in a man's best interest. If you're a woman dating a very high value guy, he's successful, he has money, he's funny, he's competent, um, he's uh, influential, socially people look up to him, men want to be him, women want to be with him. If you're with a guy like that and he chooses, I'm using the word chooses very carefully here, and he chooses to be monogamous with you, you should be grateful, very grateful in fact, because that is very, very, very rare in homo sapiens. It just is. Very few guys that are top shelf, high value men will abandon their sexual strategy of scattering seed to be with one woman. In fact, it's not even advantageous for men to be with one woman if their sexual strategy is to scatter seed. It's advantageous to have multiple partners, which is why you see in many cultures today, even to this day, around the world, where men will have multiple wives or they'll have children with multiple women sort of thing, because men are capable of doing that. Women simply are not. It's only in our Western culture, in Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, many places in Europe where things like uh, men going outside of the main relationship, going out of their marriage, going outside of their engagement, their girlfriend, whatever, are uh, frowned upon and even um, you know treated in a disparaging sort of fashion. Um, most of the world, it's pretty common. It's, it's kind of understood. In fact, in many of the European countries, especially around like the Mediterranean, Greece, Italy, Spain, uh, France, you know, stuff like that, um, it's, it's kind of understood that you're, if you're a high value guy, you're probably gonna have a mistress or you're probably gonna have a girlfriend or a side piece. Uh, wives just look the other way. Women in North America don't like to do that so much. Um, the sexual strategy that relationships seem to follow for the most part here is uh, declared monogamy but covert adultery. So you can take from it what you will. Uh, there's an entire chapter in my book, and I'm actually surprised that she brought this up because there's an entire chapter in my book talking about why uh, human beings are so promiscuous and why monogamy should really be a choice instead of enforced. So, you know, look, ladies, if you're with a handsome guy that's got his act together and women are giving him attention, looking at him, smiling at him, uh, don't be offended, don't be upset. If he says that he's interested in other women, which is a stupid thing to announce, by the way, guys, but let's just say you're dumb enough to make the announcement to cause drama in your life, then just understand that's in their nature. Um, if you don't want to hear that, ladies, if you don't want your guy to look at other girls, then go and get engaged to some fat dork that doesn't have anything going for him, and he will make you the apple of his eye. He will never look at another woman. He will be very content and happy with you. But the truth of the matter remains is you will not feel the same way about him. So if you're a woman watching this video, you need to understand you deal with a top shelf guy, somebody that's high value. He's gonna have options thrown at him in his life and he may choose to exercise it from time to time. He may not. It's just, you know, it is what it is. Personally, if you know, you're watching this video right now, I tell guys to surrender to certain facts around female nature, i.e. if you're not her best, her hypergamous hindbrain is probably gonna go looking for her best. If she's waking up in the morning continuously, day after day, month after month, week after week, thinking to herself, who is this loser? What happened to the handsome, charismatic, you know, charming, funny, fit guy that I married? Now, I've, now I'm married to this fat blob just sits around eating Cheetos, watching sports all day. She's going to be looking at Kevin from sales or Steve from accounting at the office, right? That's, that's a woman's nature, and I tell guys straight up, right? If you're not on your purpose, if you're not grinding, if you're not the best version of yourself, just understand she probably will look outside of the relationship and will probably do something at some point. The clock is generally ticking down to the end of that relationship. Flip the coin. Ladies, you're with a high value guy. The higher the value he is, if he's a 10 out of 10, the more options he's gonna have. Women are gonna be after him. Uh, you know, a woman would rather date a married guy than a single guy living in his mom's basement. Facts of life. So anyway, I hope that clarifies that point. It's an interesting one. And again, it all boils back, back down to men and women are not the same. We are different. We have different sexual strategies, but we can be a wonderful complement to each other's lives if we understand them. If you're going to browbeat a guy for looking at a girl or maybe, maybe he goes outside of the relationship, 
you know, for whatever reason, and then you want to throw the entire thing away, thinking the grass is going to be greener on the other side, or you're going to find a guy, some magical unicorn uh, that is going to be faithfully monogamous to you and only you for the rest of your life, you're sadly mistaken, because human nature is not that. Men have to accept females' nature, and women have to accept a male's nature. You want to keep this guy around? Be pleasant. Be wonderful to him. Compliment his life. Bring him beautiful children. Raise them for him in a way that's um, that's that's going to leave a legacy for the man. You know, don't nag him. Don't browbeat him. Don't belittle him. You know, don't, like don't do any of the nasty things that toxic feminists are taught today. One of the underlying notions that they hear often over and over again is essentially some some soundbite along the lines of never do anything for the express pleasure of a man. That's what toxic feminism preaches to women. That's what most women subscribe to. You want to keep a guy around? Be better than that. Be wonderful to him, right? You know what? <laughs> There's an old saying, two things. If he's got a boner, take care of it. If he doesn't, put a sandwich in his hand. Men aren't that complicated. Just be a compliment to his life and the chances of him leaving you for another woman are exceptionally likely. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. You guys leave some comments below. Smash the like button for the algorithms. Pin in the top comment, links to my book, my podcast, a bunch of other useful stuff. Check it out. We'll see you guys later. Peace.